Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we will talk about how to create a forecasting measure in Power BI. Now, this is a lab, which means that this, the material for this video will be available on my blog and you can find the link in the description of this video. You may have noticed that I titled this video to create a forecasting measure, not to create a forecast because I make a distinction. Typically, when I talk about creating a forecast, I mean that I will start with, let's say, 100 records of actual data and I'm going to use that 100 records to create an extra 10 however many of forecast records. Now in this video I'm not going to cover that scenario certainly you can create forecast data based on actual data and other things. In this video we will just create a measure that creates a forecast that allows us to do analysis. Let me illustrate. So let's take a look at the United States death trend for the last several years. By the way, this data set in this video is directly tied to CDC. You can click on refresh when you download this and this model will connect to CDC and will refresh all of the data with ongoing death cases so you could monitor the situation yourself. But basically what's happening here, I downloaded the death data starting in January uh, 2015 all the way into the recent days you will notice that last couple of weeks numbers are low that's because uh, numbers are trickling in so uh, you should ignore the last probably four weeks or five weeks because those weeks are incomplete and just use the rest of the history for analysis so let's take a look at the US day uh, death trends so you will see for example that there is several characteristics to this curve number one deaths go up and down and then number two there is some sort of trajectory there is a trend so when things go up and down based on some sort of seasonal trends we call that seasonality and you could see that every time we have beginning of the year so in winter uh, deaths spike up and then in the middle of the summer deaths uh, come down bottom out and then you could see that 2020, we had a bunch of anomalies in the way deaths are distributed. So we'll talk about that. But uh, you will also notice that when you have a really bad year, like 2015, then the following year is not as bad. So 2018, we had a big spike of deaths. And then 2018, deaths were a little bit lower, which makes it a little bit harder to figure out what's going to happen with the expected deaths. Now let's look at this report where you will see the orange line. This is the deaths. Uh, the actuals and then we have the blue line where I'm plotting the expected deaths and expected deaths is the forecasting measure that we will be dissecting and going over in this video today. Now in this video I will not be using any statistics or machine learning to create a forecasting measure everything is going to be done in pure DAX. And the reason I did this video is kind of give you some framework on how to think about the forecasting measure and some of the approaches that you might utilize as you put together your own. Now, before I jump into the decks, let's take a look at how well I did with mine. And you can see that uh, for the majority of time, my forecast is pretty spot on. Uh, I am missing a couple of spikes here. I'm over aggressive here over aggressive here but you can see that overall 90 percent of the values i'm forecasting very well and then you obviously see major issues uh, with uh, 2020 and beyond so you will also notice that my forecast is capturing the seasonality pretty well and it's also capturing the trend right so you see that my forecasted uh, or expected deaths kind of trend up and also I'm capturing the seasonality pretty accurately as well. So let's take a look at DAX and see what I had to do to implement that forecasting measure. And just very quick before I jump into DAX, this is what the model looks like. We have a fact table that has the history of all of the deaths and this table has uh, deaths by state and age group. I have state information and I also have a date. And these are the only three tables that we need to implement our forecast. Our expected deaths measure or forecast measure does use the actual value. So I've created deaths calculation and all that calculation does, it just sums up whatever values we have in the number of deaths column in the weekly deaths by age and state fact table. Now this is the DAX for the actual expected deaths measure. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on. So what I will do is I will do it step by step. So if you're not a DAX guru, you could keep up and I will be flipping from here into DAX Studio and then show you kind of what's happening and what the logic is. So let's take a look at this portion of the calculation in DAX Studio. 
For test purposes, I hard coded the current week number as 25 and current year as 20. And the first thing that we do is we're creating a variable, variable same weeks prior to 2020. And, and what we do in this, in this calculation is we want to make a list of all of the prior weeks for every year prior to 2020. So the code here is very simple. I have a date dimension. So I'm going to filter it out for all of the weeks that are equal to current week and that occurred in, in, in the past prior to 2020. And then I'm going to use a summarize function to only uh, limit the data to week ID column, because in my analysis, all of that will occur at the week grain. So after I run it, you will see that all I get is a table of prior five years, starting 2015, 16, 17, all the way to 2019 and for week 25. The next step is I use a calculate table command. And what I'm trying to do is calculate, add a column with deaths to the weeks column so that I have both columns in my table. So this is this new variable here, deaths in the same weeks prior to 2020. In my calculate table, I'm gonna add a column and then add calculate deaths for for that column. So now that I've run it, you see that my new col my new table looks like this. I have column number one with all of the uh, weeks numbers, and then I have deaths calculated for every record in this table variable. And now we're gonna get to the crux of the forecasting. So you have you can have a lot of different approaches as to how you want to calculate your forecast. And also you need to think about the cost of error in your forecast. So sometimes you wanna do your forecast based on some sort of average, most likely value. Sometimes you worry about the, the mean or max value. So for example, if I'm trying to figure out how much water to take on the trip, I need to be really, really safe with my estimates because I don't wanna run out of water. So I'd rather take too much rather than too little. And that's similar to the approach I'm using in this forecasting measure. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, in the worst case scenario, what would be the expected deaths? Because I don't wanna be optimistic in this analysis. I wanna say, if the worst situation occurred, if I'm trying to understand what the excess deaths are, what would have been the number in this case? So in order for me to do this, I calculate the following things. I need to calculate what was the smallest amount of deaths in this uh, week, which means if I'm in week 25, it's gonna get a, take a look at my table with all of the weeks uh, 25 for prior years and find what the lowest number was in the last five years. Then I'm gonna do the same, but with the highest number. So now I have min deaths and max deaths, and that's giving me basically a range. The other thing that I wanna do is I wanna calculate how many weeks I've had prior to 2020, I just wanna make it a little bit more robust. Obviously right now I know it's five, but the data set changes, I don't wanna hard code that number. So depending on the size of the data set, I just wanna uh, calculate that and make it more flexible. And then I'm gonna calculate that death growth. And that's the measure that allows me, or variables allows me to factoring the growth of deaths. So since population is growing, uh, I don't wanna do things just based on min, max, or average. I need to calculate that trend into my calculation. And now we can take a look at what actually I am returning or what my actual value is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my max deaths because for this particular calculation, I would like to make it based on worst case scenario. Again, you could say calculate the average, take the min, max. Uh, you could have different ways to go about how you wanna calculate that forecasted value. And then I'm gonna add death growth and uh, that basically will bump it up a little bit based on uh, mean max and uh, how, how much does it go on average between mean and max. And then I have this other little thing here that allows me to go past 2020. And the reason I did that is because population kept growing past 2020. I'm only using history prior to 2020, so that's gonna be pegged. I cannot use 2020 history to estimate 2021 because 2020 was completely out of whack and is not very good predictive uh, data set for me to figure out what's gonna happen 2021. So I'm still using history prior to 2020, uh, but I've put this little thing in here to increment things by one for every year since 2020. So that's just gonna make sure that my trend trajectory is gonna keep growing past 2020. And now you can see the end result of that. As you can see, uh, the prediction works very well. So for years prior to 2020, we're 
taking out the growth. So we're adjusting negatively for growth and you can see that works very well. So outside of the anomalies, uh, the, the trend is calculated really, really closely. And then you could see that 2020 we have excess deaths far, far um, higher than what the expected value were. So the orange line here is the deaths, the actual deaths, and the blue line is the expected deaths. And you could see the orange line is uh, much higher than the expected deaths. Now I've created this page here just to kind of demonstrate the type of analysis you might do with this data set. So I've created another measure that's called excess deaths and that's just the difference between actual deaths and expected deaths. And you will see that we started out the year um, basically in the negative. So we were getting fewer deaths than we were expecting. And then rapidly sometime in late March, the number starting to go up and they went up very rapidly, then they dropped, then we had a mini hump here in the late summer, and then we had another big hump uh, this winter, and now the number have been dropping dramatically, and in fact, in March, uh, looks like excess deaths uh, almost is equal to zero, and then since March, the numbers are negative. Uh, I'm not sure it's because the epidemic is not as severe or we just don't have all the data yet in terms of history. So once you get that file, keep refreshing and as more data will come from CDC, we will basically be able to use this report to figure out when the epidemic was officially over. Now, as you can see, I've also added an age group here for analysis. I think you'll find some interesting insight. Let me just click through this pretty quickly. So if you click on age of 25 and below, you can see that last year excess deaths were actually below. Uh, than expected. So um, again, it's an interesting piece of analysis if somebody wants to take that data set and start peeling the onion and trying to figure out, okay, why was this age group acting completely different from the rest of the age groups, then that would be a good uh, step one. Then if we go to 2544, we can see that in fact, uh, we, we saw that deaths were almost nothing. Uh, excess deaths were almost zero early March, but you could see that age group actually excess deaths are still uh, a little bit higher than we expected. Then when we go to 45 to 64, again, now we're looking at the humps that we saw before for the overall population, 65, 74, 74, 84, 85 and older. And you could see that 85 and older excess deaths actually ended uh, sometime in uh, early February. So there's a lot of interesting tidbits here uh, that you can uh, analyze using this very simple data set. As I said before, this data set will be available on my blog, link will be in the description. I understand that this DAX here is not perfect and this analysis is not perfect as well. However, it does give you some foundation and some ideas to start thinking about on how to implement a forecasting measure in Power BI using DAX. Thank you for stopping by and I hope this was helpful.